Hi everyone, it's Chris. Today I have a little technique video to share with you. Um, this is a technique that I used to create this card that I use for a Tailored Expressions blog hop. So this is a card using all this bright lantern dye, the lantern or the all those bright stamp sets, and the pine clippings dies. And I had challenged myself for this blog hop to use blender brushes to do all of my coloring. So I'd like to show you how I colored the lantern. In this video, I'm going to be coloring a kind of a brassy bronze colored lantern using two dye inks from Tailored Expressions. I'll be using Dijon and Toffee and one of the blender brushes. So let's get started. Now here is the die cut that I have cut from white cardstock. Now this die cut is about two and a quarter by four and a quarter inches and I'm just going to take the little interior pieces out I'm going to toss the ones that were the interior little pieces from the handle, but I'm going to save that window die cut because that's going to be important when I do my coloring. And I'll show you that in just a moment. I'm using the Waffle Flower Media Mat for my blending surface. I like this because it is very smooth and very easy to clean up. And here I have Dijon ink. This is a dye ink and in an ink cube and I'm just going to put that as my very light color, my base color for my lantern. I'm working from the edges with my blender brush and just bringing that color from the edges towards the center. I'm putting a little extra ink on the outer edges of my lantern because I'm going to start creating some shape with color. And this um, Dijon is kind of a kind of a gold toned, a little bit of a brassy color towards the yellow side. So that gives me that nice warm highlight that I'm going to want for the interior of that lantern. And now I have brought out truffle ink, which is more of a craft colored ink, a little bit um, more brownish. And it's a really nice neutral ink. And I'm going to be using that to do most of my shading. Now I have my little interior window piece. And as you can see, the shapes that it cut from that. Um, the angles of that window piece are also the shapes that run through the whole lantern. And so I'm going to be using this piece as a mask. First I have um, masked off just a very sliver at the very top of the lantern. I want that to be a highlighted area. So I kind of protected it while I added just a little bit of ink to the, the top of the chimney type portion of the lantern. And now I'm creating a kind of the rounded top of the lantern just by using those, that little angled corner to protect as I work my way down. And now I'm going to darken that color again, kind of adding more color and shadow to the neck of the lantern. And by using that little angled piece, it really gives me that dimension to follow the shape of the, the actual die cut. I'm going to keep bringing some color from the edges and here I'm going to um, add sort of a kind of a faceted look to the top of the lantern just by turning this little little piece of mask here I can kind of fi find shapes that kind of follow the the whole idea of the lantern and help me build that dimension by adding just these little triangle pieces in the darker color it really kind of makes that shape pop. And then I can add more color and just soften the sharper edges where my mask had been. I'm gonna do the same thing on kind of the flared portion of the top of the lantern here. Um, just turning that little masking piece, that little center portion, just the right corner. I would just kind of keep that circular or kind of faceted look as I work my way down through this lantern. Now I want to create a nice sharp shadow underneath that flared portion. So I'm just going to use the straight edge of my little masking piece and protect the top of the bell and just ink up those support braces and give them a nice deep color underneath there so it looks like there is a nice shadow. And then I'm going to work towards the base. Underneath the bottom I want to leave a really nice crisp shadowed area. So again, I'm going to match up 
the very edge of the lantern with that shape towards the bottom. It doesn't go all the way across. You have to be careful how much you ink there. You do a small portion at a time and then go to the other side and match up those lines again. And this is going to bring that really dark color underneath that little flare of the base and give me a little bit more the look of dimension of my lantern again. And it takes a little bit of practice to figure out which way to turn that little piece, but all of the angles are already there. So why not use that as your masking template? Now here I'm going to add a little bit of roundness to the bottom flare of the lantern just by turning that edge. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, kind of turning that piece to the opposite edge so I have that um, opposing curve. And I'm not terribly happy with where I placed that, so I'm just going to go back and adjust it just a little bit and just bring in some more ink. Um, this technique is pretty foolproof. Um, you really can keep inking and smooth things out and correct some little mistakes. It's all just fun and coloring and everything kind of seems to work out in the end. Now I'm going to add just a little bit more dimension by adding a little extra color right underneath here. I can kind of give a little bit extra look of a flare to that bottom base portion. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the top by adding more color above the very lower edge of that little flare. It really highlights um, that lighter shine of the portion that I want to appear like it just really flares out. Now I'm just going to add just a tiny bit more, darken the, the wire or the handle of the lantern, and I think it's complete. So that really was not hard. I have been playing with lots of different color combinations. I've made a dozen or two of these lanterns and played with lots of different color combos. So I have left the color combos for you in case you would like to save those. I'm just going to let those sit at the end of the video. So again, thanks for watching with me, and I hope you'll give a little bit of try to coloring your die cuts with your blender brushes. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.